Hello everybody, just wanted to give you a quick heads up about how this video will be set up. Uh, this is a cut up segment from our World Building Wednesday when we cover the Big Five and their key allies. So I decided to cut the video link down and I'll be uploading this portion of the stream into two parts. Part one is going to be this video with the Big Five's core members and part two will be their key allies. So yeah, just wanted to get it out of the way and without further ado, hope you enjoy. Hello everybody, uh, welcome back to the Studio Skirty channel. Uh, my name is Mazarin. And today, we're going to be talking about the Big Five. A uh, brief history, uh, who consists uh, of, of the ranks of the Big Five, uh, some of their allies across the world, and key events in the history of the Big Five. So, the Big Five were formed from the central players within the Allies, uh, one of the two factions of the Second, the second World War. Uh, although one could argue this mutually beneficial alliance dates back further, and we'll see in a second uh, what that means. Uh, and so together, the Allies, uh, the Big Five, formed the Score United Nations in 537 DE, a year following the end of the Second World War. Uh, they became permanent members of the Security Council, while the remainder of the Allies they fought with uh, constituted the First Nations of the General Assembly. The Big Five have dictated global policies for the past 80 years, and while this time frame was abound in road bumps, uh, so... Uh, separate crises, uh, civil wars, uh, insurgencies. Uh, besides that, they've met little resistance in carving out their vision of a united, stable, and more peaceful world. Let's talk about some of the key events uh, leading to the formation of the Big Five first, because that's very important. So a brief timeline of key events. Uh, so first off, you have the Cantonian Revolution. Uh, so the revolution in Cantus in 384 DE was the earliest instance of every member of the Big Five uh, being in the conflict. So you had on one side the Cantanian Republicans uh, allied to the Vescorian Republic, uh, the Nicterian Republic, and the, interestingly enough, uh, the Visodium of Almora against the Cantanian Monarchists who were allied to the Kingdom of Gowaku, uh, the Fates Sultanate, and the Kingdom of Niles. Uh, and, and then next coming up is the Great Vescorian War uh, sometime thereafter in 435. DE. Uh, this was actually a war where everybody <laughs> who was involved in the Big Five in the present day uh, was on different sides of the conflict. The Great Falskorian War was more of an interreligious conflict, so you had different uh, branches of Theosism going at it as long as Lahada sects and um, also irreligious unaffiliated sects, so that's, that's where the Nigerian Special Forces came in in that war. Uh, and then next having the Lobokan War come up, um, this was probably the first instance of the modern Big Five members working together. Uh, this came, uh, I want to believe, 25-ish uh, years before World War I, and this was a very major conflict in Laboka, which saw the end of the Fates Sultanate, uh, driven out by a force of the Nigerians, Vedians, Guwakins, Valmorans, Cantanians, and the Volage Federation. Excuse me, the Volage Empire at this point. Uh, World War One. Uh, was a conflict, uh, obviously, across the world, but primarily concerned itself with uh, larger theaters in Talmer and Valscoria, uh, and this saw the end of the uh, Second Valdish Empire. Uh, and then World War II saw the rise of the Pact of Steel, which was a large uh, totalist uh, uh, coalition of countries. Uh, very brutal war as well, and uh, this saw the further... Um, reinforcement of the Big Five and its ranks and uh, its strength. Uh, when we talk more about World War II, we'll further define um, who the Pact of Steel was and what their ideas and beliefs and uh, uh, larger players were. And then as we discussed shortly thereafter, the formation of the Square United Nations uh, came afterward. Uh, and now, finally, let's get into uh, what nations make up the ranks uh, of the Big Five. Uh, and this is uh, in alphabetical order, so no particular order, just alphabetical order. First up, uh, the Kingdom of Guwaku, whose motto translates to Honor Those Who Honor You. Uh, Guwaku is a large island nation located in uh, northeastern Valscoria, led by King Aristides Pulakos, as well as Prime Minister Lucas Vitras. Uh, Guwaku is the home of Northern Orthodoxy, uh, which is one of the main branches of Theosism, uh, the other main branches being uh, Reformed Theosism and Hellenic Catholic Theosism, uh, both of whom we'll briefly touch on as well. Uh, they actually, in fact, fought uh, to become the head of Northern Orthodoxy with other states, such as the Kingdom of Almercia, which was located in southern 
uh, southeast of Almora before unification, as well as the Nasa, which was a large uh, imperial state in Talmer. Uh, and they fought brief wars with them to cement themselves as the home and the head of Northern Orthodoxy. Uh, Guwaka is also home to uh, large sporting institutions such as the uh, uh, International War Bowl Federation as well as the International uh, Association of Gridiron, or also known as uh, football. So more like American football in that case. Um, uh, Guwaka also had a large empire at one point. Uh, the Guwaka Empire spanned the Yamin Hranic world, which included uh, not only Guwaka but Piravi, uh, the island of Hraina, uh, Wisdo, uh, and parts of former Semandar, including Rethelhar and I believe Ulusunar. Uh, it also included Shigari, which is a big, uh, not, not an island, excuse me, but a large state in continental Vasuna. Uh, the, and because of this, uh, how could they get this empire, you might be asking? Uh, Guwaku has always had a large and very intimidating naval fleet. Uh, in fact, the Guwakans have made it their focus uh, in education for their citizenry to become knowledgeable in a variety of maritime studies, from fishing to naval engineering. Uh, they also have a large and infamous ancient hostility with Wisdo, with several centuries of bloody conflict between them in and around uh, their island countries, as well as Paravi, which is an island nation that sits between them. Uh, this conflict is often compared with the Hranic myth of Tavos and Lavos. Uh, Tavos and Lavos were uh, sons of Viator, the god of war. They were the gods of fear and madness, respectively, uh, and they both... Uh, basically just fought over and over with each other, and that's often equated to the conflict between Guwaku and Wisdo. Uh, but yeah, that is Guwaku for you. And moving on, we have Cantus. Uh, Cantus is another island nation in Valscoria, uh, in the southwestern part of the region. Uh, the motto translates into from Cantanian, which is very close to the related to Nicterium. Uh, the journey is clear, our ancestors have paved the way. Uh, it's a large, diverse island nation in southern Valscoria, as we've discussed. Uh, it was once Doromic, uh, so similar cultural traits to uh, Valmora and parts of Western Oscoria, uh, but then ruled by uh, Niter speaking nobility, which evolved the language into uh, what's now known as Cantanian. Uh, what's interesting is this language and culture stuck around, but however, following this period, a brief uh, period of Narakami elites from Erlistris came over, uh, married into the royal family of Cantus, and brought their way of life over with them, as well as the religion of Dream Conjuring. Uh, and this religion, as we would know later on, would stick around. Uh, and uh, so Cantus was a founding member of the Big Five, but left the group following the scandal known as Cant Exit. Uh, we'll have a more dedicated world-building segment to talk about Cant Exit, but essentially a scandal uh, formed uh, after Cantus tried to prop up, uh, or I should say they successfully propped up colonies uh, in Kodwaria, which is a neutral region of the world. Um, and got away with it for a long time after repeatedly denying um, their territorial claims uh, in Kodwaria, uh, they left the group over uh, those differences. Um, despite this, they still continue to work close with the Big Five and its allies, uh, but more tend to trust uh, their uh, other Valscorian allies as opposed to some of the Talmary ones. Um, but what made Cantus a very important value member of the Big Five uh, when they were still a part of it? Uh, was the very formidable Air Force Marine forces that they uh, they held. In fact, the Mako Sharks, which were a unit of uh, Cantanian Marines, uh, infamous for their swift and sudden intervention in the Solgari Civil War, which was during the 600s, early 600s. Uh, and so what did the Mako Sharks do? They disposed of Norumbuso Obokole, who was a infamous uh, and deadly Solgari warlord. Uh, so that's Cantus for you. Next up, we have Nigeria. Uh, Nigeria's motto translates from Nigerian into liberty and equality over tyranny. Uh, Nigeria is a large uh, democratic institution in Talmer, uh, in fact, among the oldest democratic institutions uh, ever in the world. Um, so the country is led by President William Malborn uh, and also uh, led by the Speaker of the Assembly or the legislator uh, Victor Solmore. Uh, Nigeria was the form, one of the former strongholds of the Malinkan Empire. In fact, uh, we'll talk about Malinka later in this list as they're still affiliated with the Big Five. This, however, changed with the Nigerian Revolution, uh, which is a very uh, abrupt and deadly and uh, influential conflict that greatly transformed and inspired a lot of Talmari countries uh, that saw what was going to happen, that was happening in Talmari, uh, excuse me, Nigeria, 
uh, inspired to then revolt and form uh, democratic institutions of their own, seeing themselves as better fitting rulers uh, than the kings that have been enthroned for hundreds and hundreds of years. Um, uh, following the revolution, uh, there was a notable, uh, impactful, but brief uh, monarchist imperial period, which caused great dis disarray and war. Uh, I don't know the name of the conflict itself off the top of my head, but uh, it may have been called the War of the Coalition or something similar, uh, but essentially what transpired was a coalition of uh, Valskorian and Talmari countries teamed up, uh, got rid of the Nigerian Emperor, whose descendants and supporters fled uh, into canteen held land in Valskoria and formed what is now known as the Modern Kingdom of Nilius. Uh, Nigeria also has large and diverse metropolitan areas. Uh, some entire districts of a city, in fact, can be dominated by one ethnic group at a time. Uh, a notable example would be Nolzgrad, which I believe is the largest city in Nigeria, is a sprawling and rich international hub uh, just littered with gleaming spires. Like, I, I would say when you conjure the image of Nolzgrad, uh, similar to what you would think of like New York City in like, downtown Manhattan. Um, and so Nigeria's approach in the Big Five was largely diplomatic uh, and reasonable to otherwise uh, volatile world affairs uh, before uh, having to necessarily and absolutely resolve to uh, deploy one of the most skilled and efficient special forces uh, the world has ever seen. Um, the Nigerian special forces um, include several uh, infamous and famous groups such as the Black Badgers, the Night Owls, Task Force 48, and the famous Foreign Legion. Uh, so yeah, Nigeria's special <laughs> spe speciality, you could say, is its special forces. And that's Nigeria. And now let's talk about uh, their neighbors to the north, the Valdish Federation. Uh, the Valdish Federation's motto uh, from Valdish translates to inseparable and indomitable. Uh, the president, Gerda Kestenhoff, is both the head of state and government, so more akin to what you might be familiar with in the United States, uh, where the president is uh, in absolute power despite being democratically elected, uh, of the executive branch, that is. Uh, and so the Valdish Federation, uh, even during its imperial age, was always a bastion of trade, uh, so because of its uh, location on the western coast of Talmere, uh, it was a good port of entry for Visunan and even Raelian, um merchants to come into Talmere and sell their goods. Uh, in fact, um, uh, several traders and merchants from southern Talmere and even uh, the far north would meet in the middle uh, in Valdish lands uh, to trade. Uh, however, historically, um, the blob you're seeing now is while it might be the present territory of the Valdish Federation, uh, the Valdish Empire uh, quite literally spanned uh, across central Talmere, which made this much easier uh, in the past. Now, this Valdish Empire existed in two phases, uh, but the latter half uh, once ruled over much of central Talmere, as well as parts of Bosmaria, Cassivea, Laboca, and Illustrious. Uh, the aftermath of World War I saw it dissolved and birthed the present-day Valdish Federation as we know it now, uh, and during the interwar period, uh, further uh, introduced more democratic institutions and even uh, a foreign, or excuse me, a volunteer legion uh, that formed to help the Allies in World War II fight back against the Pact of Steel. Uh, and as we said with Cantus leaving the Big Five, uh, it was the Valdish Federation that replaced them in 587 BE. Uh, and as far as militarily speaking, the Valdish Federation brings a lot of uh, impressive and innovative artillery. Uh, units, as well as logistical forces, uh, with the ability to, to disrupt and repair communications uh, when necessary. So that's the Valdish Federation. Moving on, we have Valmora. Uh, Valmora's motto translates to Forge Out of Conquest, uh, Created by Peace. Uh, Valmora is an executive monarchy, uh, quite literally, uh, and arguably more, uh, more authoritarian than the other members of the Big Five. Uh, that's for a lot of historical and cultural traditional reasons. Uh, the leader of Valmora is Vizelda Jacko II. Uh, however, there is a democratically elected institution uh, in the parliament, uh, and the leader of the government is uh, Prime Minister Julia Alstogra. Valmora has always had like, a, a large martial spirit and proud warrior culture, uh, which fostered ideas of chivalry, honor, and nobility uh, across the several different uh, kingdoms because uh, Valmora for the largest part of history was divided uh, up until the War of Valmora in Succession which occurred in the 190s 
uh, and unified most of the island uh, until fully unifying uh, 200 years later, uh, which then formed the Empire of Almora. Uh, this empire governed over much of western Valscoria, as well as the islands of Alagosa and Casavea, and the city-state of Maiko following the Lobokan War. Uh, Valmora is uh, a large bastion, but not the head of Northern Orthodoxy. Uh, and this was uh, largely in part due to um, the influence uh, Guwaku exerted onto eastern Valmora, uh, whereas the western half of Valmora remains and is largely Catholic, uh, but with um, unification it was necessary for uh, the incoming western rulers to embrace orthodoxy and cement it as the national faith. Uh, Valmorans speak uh, Malinkin and Valmoran, a larger uh, instance as its other territories, uh, Malinka rather um, set up uh, trading posts in the western part of the country uh, and because of their involvement in the War of Valmoran succession uh, garnered a large influence and cultural um, shall we say sentiment, positive sentiment uh, as you'll see and with many other countries in this video um, because of Malinka's empire and expansion uh, Malinkin is basically the, the lingua franca of Scoria, so a lot of countries do speak Malinkin in addition to their native languages. Um, and what does Valmor bring to the table? Uh, Valmor is the largest army <laughs> in the world and of its members in the Big Five. Uh, it spends a gross amount of money uh, from its national budgets on maintaining and uh, propping up its large army uh, known as the Legions, uh, which consists of thousands of soldiers each with their own storied histories, uh, which depend on the battles they fought in or famous figures that came from the ranks or that they associate with. So that is Valmora. And last but certainly not least, in the Big Five lineup, we have Venom, whose motto translates to We Rose from the Ashen Sky. Uh, Val excuse me, Venom is a constitutional republic led by President Madara Fonti, as well as the head of government being Alaramo Sarachi. Uh, in fact, it's interesting in Venom because the vice president and president are often from different parties. Um, excuse me, this is mostly uh, a gesture or a means of uh, reconciliation and diplomacy and peace between uh, the once uh, largely broken up islands that consist uh, the modern uh, Vedian nation state. Uh, so there's obviously a large history of uh, being broken up and reunified uh, before finally being re reunified formally um, in the War for Vedian Unification, uh, which in fact sped up the unification process by uh, forcibly invading neutral Vedian states. Uh, so they've always had on and off war with the Fatah Sultan, who we've discussed a lot, as well as the Semandari Empire, which uh, we may do a world building Wednesday in the future when we talk about... Um, uh, these empires that made uh, considerable impacts through our history. Uh, the Vedians speak Vescorian as well as speak uh, Malinkan, uh, but they also have a large minority of people that speak uh, Nidi and Varalan. Uh, these were both from former colonies of the Vedian. Uh, they don't like to use the word empire, but it essentially for all intents and purposes was an empire. Uh, the Vedian Empire was a large uh, Republican uh, imperialist ambition which saw Venom govern over not only itself, but the island of Severek, as well as Varala and Illustrious, and the uh, western portions of Laboka. Uh, the Vedians also practiced Tarsitian Reform Theosism, which we discussed earlier as a branch of Theosism that's a little more modern and reformed, <laughs> as with the name, uh, sort of akin to your uh, Protestantism, specifically more Baptist uh, than anything. Uh, and much like Iwaku exhibits a large navy, however, an arguably larger uh, merchant fleet. Uh, and this merchant fleet allows them uh, to be spread out across the world and be prepared for rapid marine response uh, to violent outbreaks. Uh, 